The anime world has blessed us with some amazing shows and even amazing characters, but the ones we'll be talking about today are our favorite kind, the overpowered ones. Perfect. Always calm and composed, these characters have not much to fear. Their presence alone is enough to ward off their foes, but even these characters have a breaking point. What would happen if these characters were to somehow go berserk? Welcome back to Animeology. Today, let's have a look at the moment when these overpowered characters finally snapped. Number 8, Makoto's Rage, Tsukumichi Moonlit Fantasy. <laughs> The first entry we have on our list is when our innocent little Makoto gives in to the cruelty of this world, when faced with Elaine, the one who killed his friend for some mere weapons. As Elaine stands up and tries to make a hasty retreat, dark mist suddenly envelops her vision, and before you know it, here comes Makoto making ice-cold entry out of the mist. Just the part of Makoto smoothly walking and waving his hand around has more budget than the entirety of Seven Deadly Sins Season 3. Makoto looks at Elaine with eyes just screaming for revenge, and with his dark evil smirk, you can practically sense the bloodlust emanating from him. And why wouldn't it be? These sketchy rival adventurers caused the explosion which almost killed his friends, and to top it off, he wasn't sensing Tomoe's fragments, leading him to the sad realization of her death. No wonder Makoto completely snapped and was no more that funny, happy, and reserved person. Just looking at his eyes, the crippling death stare is enough to make the strongest of foes shake in their boots. I don't know if you remember, but a similar rage moment occurred for our boy when he fought God Samal who insulted his parents. Makoto took care of that bit as well, and just proves to show that he isn't somebody you want to mess around with. To make matters worse, Elaine actually tries to attack him. Yeah, like that's ever worked. Without exhausting any effort, the sword deflects off of Makoto's shield and with a single clean slash, he severs her hand from her body. Elaine helplessly pleads for her life and tells him to stay away. Finding her voice absolutely annoying, Makoto slowly enters his short sword into her throat and bids farewell. What a transformation of our jolly, happy Makoto into a cold-blooded killer. A truly wholesome scene, am I right? Number 7, Ganta Igarashi loses it. Dead Man Wonderland. <laughs> Considered as one of the biggest wimps of the season, Ganta Igarashi shushed up all the haters when he completely snapped and unleashed his superpower. Unjustly framed for murdering his whole class, Ganta is quickly cuffed up and thrown into the worst prison the world has ever seen, Dead Man Wonderland. There, Ganta gets bullied, beaten, and outright given mental torture every single day. Captured by the Undertakers for trying to escape the prison, Ganta stands helpless and weak as he witnesses his best friend Shiro fall down trying to save him as Hibana Daida breaks her legs, one of the Undertakers. Then he sees Azuma Ginkaku pierce the heart of Karaka Koshio, who's trying to bring Nagi Kingamine back to his senses. But what really makes Ganta snap is when he sees Azuma kill Nagi with his gun. That was it. That was when Ganta stood up and completely changed. Anger boiling inside him, red marks similar to the ones on Shiro's body, took their place around his arm and face, eyes turning blood red. Ganta aims his hand towards Azuma and shoots out an incredible amount of energy, equal to a nuclear bomb, and wipes out the near existence of what was once Azuma Ginkaku. Number 6, Shinamon Benimaru vs Infernal Demon, Fire Force. Shinamon Benamaru has remained a fan favorite throughout the series for his damn as hell good looks, calm fighting style, and ultimate power that we have yet to see. 
It's so rare to see Benimaru losing his cool, but when a horn infernal appears and tries to destroy his town and people, he isn't planning on taking it as a visitor. The demon throws himself on Benimaru and lands a series of punches that Benimaru easily deflects. Knowing the effect the horn demon had in the past on his village, where it had blown up the whole town, Benimaru takes a demon for a ride into the sky, and that's where he unleashes his ultimate power. The demon doesn't even stand a chance. I mean, it did roar angrily, but what's that gonna do against the greatest fire soldier? To top it all off, he uses a seventh form called the Sun Wheel, where seven of his Matau appear out of nowhere and pierce the solid body of the demon and burst. But what's this? This attack didn't even leave a crack on him. What type of demon is this? Benimaru now pissed, and just by the way, he's never pissed, but this demon is taking it too far, and now he's gonna get it. Benimaru uses his final move named the Crimson Moon and completely annihilates the horned demon, sending his demonic soul straight back to hell. We won't be seeing much of him now. Number 5. Megumi's Unreal Domain Expansion, Jujutsu Kaisen, Episode 23. Kaisaku! Rated as one of the top animes of the season, Jujutsu Kaisen is nothing short of epic battles and some of the best fights the anime industry has ever seen. Yuji Itadori and Gojo Sensei stole the spotlight throughout the anime series, but it is without a doubt that characters like Megumi and Nobara had a really important role to give the anime series a touch of class. Late to the party was Megumi Fushiguro, whose true ability and hidden domain expansion was blessed to us in episode 23, where we get to see Megumi leave his comfort zone and push himself beyond the limit and lock into his domain expansion, Chimera Shadow Garden, against the evil curse. Late, but worth the wait. As Megumi, Yuki, and Nobara search for the cursed spirits, they come face to face with the spirit that has eaten one of Tsukuna's cursed fingers. Megumi face the cursed spirit alone and gets beaten up like hell. Despite all this, his sinister smile and greedy eyes meant that he was not finished and was hungry for more as he pulls off the darkest and most ominous ability all while bleeding and laughing his head off. The show ended by giving us one of the most epic fights ever seen in the history of anime. Number 4, Yunogasai goes full yandere mode. Future Diary, Episode 7. The queen of yandere moments and losing her mind when she sees anyone even laying a hand on her lover Yuki. We've gotten to see some really crazy scenes that we could never have even imagined by our very own Yuno Gasai. The plot of the show revolves around a battle royale between 12 individuals who are given future diaries that predict the future by Deuce Ex Machina, the god of time and space. From the beginning to the end, we could see some really yandere moments by Yuno, who's willing to risk her life just to save Yuki from danger as well as any other lover. There are multiple scenes where we get to see Yuno snap and manslaughter thousands of people out of her so-called love for Yuki. When it comes to being the innocent, helpless princess, the six diary holder Tsubaki Kasugano wins here. During their journey to destroy the different diary users, Yuno and Yuki both meet Tsubaki who pretends to be a helpless princess in need of Yuki's help. Yuki falls for her sly trick, despite Yuno telling him earnestly that she doesn't trust her. Yuno tries multiple times to separate Yuki from Tsubaki, but things heat up when Tsubaki tells her guards to hold Yuno while she kisses Yuki right in front of her. The emotions that run through Yuno's facial expressions is why the anime is such a huge hit. Eyes filled with hurt and shock at the beginning, and then all at once, developing into a death stare that just screams of malice and hatred. Yuno breaks through the hold of the guards, and with every anger and hatred in her blood, she uses her axe and cuts off Tsubaki's hands. Number 3. Rim Turns Into a Demon, Re-Zero As caretakers of Rosewall and his mansion, Rim and Ram are both very much reserved towards Subaru from the very beginning. They show no emotions and are quite distrusting towards him, who reeks of the witch's scent. Then one night, Rim just up and turns into a demon, grows a horn, and kills Subaru. 
thanks to his ability to restart life or re-zero, Subaru comes back to life and gets the opportunity to change his fate. Rim tries to kill Subaru multiple times as he somehow escapes into the forest where he for the first time sees Rim in her demon form. Just as Subaru manages to put some distance between them, here comes the demon dogs who are attracted to him due to the witch's scent around him. First Rim and now the demon dogs? Why can't Subaru get a moment's break? Rim thankfully catches up and now her focus shifts to the demon dogs. Laughing frantically as well as waving her giant metal spiked ball on a long chain, Rim kills each and every demon dog that comes her way, but not before having a few attempts at Subaru, whom she is dead set on killing. Kung Fu kicking, catching a dog by its throat and punching its brains out, Rim's eyes perfectly reflect the joy of each and every moment of her wholesome dog slaying. Not even Ram's own sister recognizes her demonic laugh and satanic smile. Number 2. Saitama vs Silver Fang – One Punch Man I thought it was a cat, but it was just a stupid plastic bag. And now all that delicious meat we bought has been run over by a truck and ruined. You two look like you're in need of some nourishment. Hmm? Oh. Taken to his dojo, Silver Fang, one of the S-Class superheroes, shows off his incredible strength, but that fails to impress our Saitama who just came because he was hungry for some meat. They then play some games to see who is faster and stronger, which obviously Saitama dominates until the last game, which Silver Fang calls Hit, Cover, Rock, Paper, Scissors. One has to uncover a bowl, place upside down and keep it on their head, and the other has to hit the opponent on the head with a toy hammer. Saitama takes up the challenge, but it's not until round 82 that he gets a chance to take out the hammer. The grin of sweet revenge on Saitama's face when he finally gets to smash the living daylights out of Silver Fang. He picks up the hammer as swiftly as possible, face heated with anger. Our piss off Saitama smashes the bowl that was placed on Silver Fang's head. Luckily, Silver Fang sees Saitama is not one to hold back and quickly escapes the deadly blow as he crushes the bowl to smithereens. Born an orphan, treated like an outcast throughout his life, Naruto had a difficult as well as a traumatic childhood where no one ever wanted to be around him. But things change when he meets Jiraiya Sensei, who takes him under his wing and becomes the father and best friend he never believed he could have had. Dreams do come true, but happiness does not stay long for Naruto as Jiraiya gets killed mercilessly by Pain, the leader of the Akatsuki. And when Naruto faces Pain head on, he gets overpowered and pinned down. Reinforcements came in the form of Hinata Hyuga, but despite trying her best to save Naruto, she gets beat into a pulp and thrown around like a rag doll. As the beatdown continued, Naruto can do nothing but watch helplessly on the floor. With each impact, his blood boiled until he couldn't take it anymore and unleashes his sealed nine tail trap until Pain is no longer able to keep up. This time, he's the one being tossed around, thrown between mountains and crushed under heavy boulders. He tries everything in his arsenal, even planetary devastation, but the Ninetales is far superior to any of his previous foes, and he is forced to succumb against its might, completely releasing the Ninetailed Beast. 